Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to demonstrate Ohio State University's workflow for batch uploading ETD theses to the Ohio Link ETD Center. Um, so before we start, um, I'm going to let you know that uh, I'm Terry and I have my colleague Sharab here, and we both Hi. will be oh, sorry. Yep. We both are going to be chatting as we go through this process. Um, I'm on the driver's seat, but he's going to um, fill in um, as we go through any information that we need to have. Um, so before we start, I want to um, show you kind of how the data is structured, um, so that way you can see how the uh, the process works. So the Ohio Link ETD batch uploader can handle roughly, I believe, the maximum output is a thousand records at a time. Uh, we have t approximately 25,000 and change um, PhD theses that we're in the process of uploading. And in order to make the process easier for us to work with, uh, we've broken them into much smaller units. Right now we have units of 50. And they're broken up into these folders. Um, each one has a number. Um, we've done a couple, so I'm going to start with this one because it's the one that we are going to do today. Um, there are basically three files that are necessary in order to work through this process. Uh, the first two are specific to Ohio Link. Um, the PDF's zip file and the rex.csv. Those are the files that we send to Ohio Link. The rex.csv is a comma delimited file that conforms to a format that the uh, Ohio Link um, folks have created for the batch process. Um, this file was created using a script that I wrote, um, which reads mark data and turns it into the CSV format. Uh, the pdfs.zip file is a representation of all of the zip files, all of the PDF files that are referenced within that comma delimited file. So for every, every record in that comma delimited file, there's a PDF that corresponds to it in the pdfs.zip file. And that's how the batch upload, to upload tool works. Um, it reads line by line um, through the CSV CVS file and it's going to match each reference PDF to a PDF in um, the zip file. Uh, important things that we've learned over the course of working with this, um, the PDF file's name in the CSV file has to be exactly the same in the PDF.zip file, and that includes case sensitivity. Um, so you can't have a file that's the same name but with an uppercase extension in the CSV file with the lower and a lowercase extension in the zip file. So those are some of those kind of uh, quirky things. Um, the other thing that uh, we've learned is creating the CVS file is that some um, data in the CSV file can be Unicode, um, that, that is, can contain diacritics, and some of the data can't. Uh, so primarily the titles um, can contain diacritical data, so they can be Unicode, um, but things like keywords, um, descriptions, other information within the CSV file, um, there is a requirement within um, the validator that Ohio Link uses that that data not be Unicode. And the validator, when you upload this data, will tell you which, which elements can and can't be, um, uh, have Unicode data because they'll identify um, uh, an error as invalid characters if you have a Unicode or a diacritical mark in a field um, that shouldn't be, that shouldn't have one. Uh, the last piece of information is this rex.mrk file. This is the representation of the mark records that um, are covered within the, the CESV file. Um, and we're going to use that file. So what we're going to end up doing, it's what's important here at Ohio State, is the process that we're going to go through is we are going to upload these two, uh, the, the CSV file, the zip file to Ohio Link. Ohio Link is going to process these records. They're going to generate a, an output for us so that we know that those records have been processed. But they're also going to give us back the URL. And we're going to use that URL plus piece of information that we've provided to Ohio Link to merge that data into this set of mark records. So that way we can load those records into OCLC and into our catalog um, here at Ohio State University. Uh, the process that we're going to go through here with this video is everything up to the process of going to um, uh, before we would load the data to OCLC. Um, we're just going to do the load to uh, Ohio Link. We're going to do the data manipulation to merge the, that data from Ohio Link back into the MARC records, and then we're going to stop. Um, since everybody's process to load data into their catalog and into um, OCLC may be slightly different. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. 
So I had asked Sharab to load in to log into um, Ohio Link, and when you log into Ohio Link's um, ETD tool, um, this is where you start. Uh, the batch upload, if you have um, permissions to use it, uh, will show up right here. It's the ETD batch upload. Um, so we'll go ahead and click on that, and this is the interface that you get. Um, by default, uh, it looks like it's filling in Ohio State University for us. Um, we have to pick the submission site, and right now I think we're the only one, so that will change, I imagine, as Ohio Link keeps rolling this out. So um, Ohio State University. In order for this process to work, they have to validate your files. Um, you can do um, a straight upload your files, in which case validation happens before um, it uploads the data. Um, we prefer to break it into two steps. So that way, if anything happens along the way, we know upfront um, before we actually up before we actually go through the upload file steps. It takes a little bit more time, but I think that it makes the process cleaner um, for, for what we're doing. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to choose a file. So we have to choose our CSV file. So we're keeping our CSV files, all of our files on our network. Um, so we just have to go find them here real quick. And, cat. and we go to ETD Ohio uh, Link. I'm blind here. There it is. All right. ETD um, files to process. And we're in number three. So we're going to take our CSV file. Uh, the next file we're going to pick is we're going to pick the zip files, and thankfully it's going to remember where we were last. So we pick our zip file, and now we're going to validate those records. So we go ahead and hit validate, and this is going to take a few minutes because what's happening at this point is we're uploading a lot of big records to Ohio Link. So um, even though Ohio Link can take a thousand records at a time, we've broken them into 50 records, and those 50 records for our PDFs are roughly, on average, about 300 megabytes per set. Um, so at 1,000 records, we would be looking at 300, what 1,000 would be, um, 20 of those. Mm -hmm. So you'd be, you'd be looking at, at roughly gigabytes of data being pushed over the network. Um, but Wyolink says they can process it if you feel comfortable doing that size. Yeah. <laughs> be our guest, uh, but we're sticking with smaller sets, um, partly because it, uh, it, the, the more records that you pass up, the longer this part of the process is going to take. Um, and also, I think the harder it is to figure out what's gone wrong when a problem comes up. And even though um, I believe that the process we've worked through for doing the Ohio link part um, should be fairly straightforward and should be should have minimal errors. Um, we do want to make sure that if does something does come up, um, for example, uh, a subject was incorrect or um, we find that for some reason um, a diacritic made it into a file when it shouldn't have or something like that, that we have small enough record sets that um, it's able to it's easy to to correct them on the fly without having to to sort through hundreds of mm -hmm. records in a set. All right, so when this is finished, and it should be finished here shortly, um, what will end up happening is this screen will redirect us to this screen again, but without a, uh, um, without a, a progress bar, and we'll show you where to go next here in a second, as soon as it's, uh, here we go, we can see where we're at. We're down in the bottom. Bottom left, we can see how much we're at. We're uploading. We've gotten to 60%. So um, you can see uh, from here how long you can expect to take uh, sitting here waiting for the process to work. Now I will admit it. Uh, you you may find that your upload time will vary. I'm running this through a, a VPN. Um, so if I was plugged directly into my office, um, where I was directly into the Ethernet port might upload a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how much faster because I've sat here and yeah. watched uh, a few of these other yeah, ones. And... Really well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. 20% to go. Uh, all right, so we're at 80%. And it looks like we are just about finished, 85%. 
Now we will end up doing this again after we validate the files. Hmm. The second time when we do this, we upload again. Um, the way that the Ohio link process works, it doesn't look like it remembers the files that it validated. Um, I'm not sure we'll find out if the upload goes faster. Maybe they, maybe there's some caching involved. I don't think so. I think it's a strict upload again. So we will have to go through this process to re-upload the data one more time um, after it tells us that we've successfully validated our data. All right, so we hit 100%. Now we're just waiting for Ohio Link to respond to us with a, um, a success message that the upload's been uh, captured. Um, essentially, that just means that this progress bar will go away. Um, right, and the person who logged in will, will receive an email uh, notification if you prefer to go somewhere else and do something else. That's right. That's yeah. right. So HyoLink yeah. does send out notifications for when process when each action is completed, mm -hmm. and that email goes to whoever's logged in. Um, so for this one, uh, Shrab's going to be getting the email. Mm -hmm. um, for uh, for our, the other thing they do is, and we'll see this here in a second, is this this button here will eventually become highlighted, and we'll be able to uh, to use the the upload history the the history report to um, see the success, failure, or errors, if there are any errors um, in the process. <clears throat> there we go. All right, so the uh, screen's gone white, so our buttons are re-enabled, so I can click on the history report. And we can see right now that the result is processing. Um, and uh, I can refresh this periodically to see when the process completes, or I can keep an eye on uh, Rob's computer who's sitting next to me and see when the email comes through. <laughs> right. There we go. So it's uh, went ahead and finished. So you'll see Good. when I refreshed it, good. the validate and says it's successful. Good. So we know that the process is good. So now we can go back. And we can re-upload our files. So you can see those two pieces have been remembered. So we will re-choose our files, make sure we're in the same place. So we are. So we'll take our CSV file again. Um, we will pick our PDF file, make sure the paths are right. Take our PDF file. And then we will go ahead and upload them. And if we look down in the lower left-hand corner again, we can see the uploading um, as it occurs. Um, again, we're uploading the files, and at this point, the data will load into OhioLink um, because we've gone through the validation process once, it's validated, and now we're, uh, we're just going to wait um, and let it upload. So while it's uploading, I want to talk just a minute about um, how, the, uh, how we generated these files. Um, just so folks understand. Uh, so the process that we use for doing these, so the way that we got our, our these, these ETDs, um, and we're actually going to be doing two different sets, uh, large sets um, in this project. One are PhD theses, which are the ones we're working on right now that we're demonstrating. Uh, one set will be master's theses. Uh, the PhD theses we got from ProQuest, and ProQuest provided to us um, as some metadata, so we got some MARC records that we've um, we've updated, um, and they sent us uh, PDFs, lots and lots of PDFs um, on disks. So what I ended up doing was I ended up writing a script, a small script that essentially matched the data from the source PDF record or the source uh, MARC records to the PDFs that were available um, in each one of those uh, disks that they sent us CDs. Um, Using that process, we were able to create um, those small chunked files that you seen earlier when we started the sessions. The, 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 the files we're uploading right now. Um, and the process for doing that um, in, involved actually for us using a couple of different, different um, outputs. So we knew that we were going to have some duplication between um, the data that's going to uh, the data that ProQuest sent us to the data that we were going to be sending to Ohio Link, and so to avoid duplication, we created um, some lists where basically we had titles. Um, and so part of the scripts process is it compares the titles in the list of dupes to the titles that are going into um, Ohio Link, and it takes them away. So if there's duplicates, those get removed. 
Um, some of the other things that the script does is it cleans up some of the ProQuest data because some of the ProQuest data wasn't particularly good. Um, all in all, what ends up happening is the process to generate um, all of these files, these upload packets, takes roughly about two and a half hours um, in order to move all of the data around and create all of the uh, individual zip files because the script actually creates each one of those zip files. Um, and it takes about two and a half hours. Um, then the files are then loaded into a network space for um, our folks to process. Mm -hmm. Um, the second steps that we're going to go through um, following um, this upload here um, are working with MarkEdit, using a couple of tools in MarkEdit to merge data and generate brief records. Um, and we've actually created a set of templates which could be reused outside of Ohio State um, to uh, generate the, um, the brief mark records that we're going to use to merge uh, back into our core set. Um, as well as some scripts that we use to do some, some general cleanup on the MARC records that are to some degree a little bit um, tied to the way that we load data into OCLC and our interlibrary loan, our, our ILS system, um, but could be customized um, for, for individual use. All right, so it looks like our data has been uploaded. So now we just wait. Um, for the screen to go white, and then we'll be able to go to our batch upload history port again, like we did last time, and wait for the success message. Um, except this time, we are going to be collecting some data from um, from Ohio Link as well as part of uh, when as we finish this process. And as I said, you're, um, you're, you'll probably notice this process will run a little bit faster. Um, uh, partly, I think it's that I'm running through the VPN, but the other thing is we're, as we're recording this session, um, it, it does tend to, um, it does make things a little bit slower since it's, uh, since it's constantly screen, screen capturing data. So we'll just finish and wait here, and it should be done here in a second. And we'll be able to check our reports. So. <sighs> All right. Waiting, 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 waiting. We can probably shorten some of them. Okay. Yeah. All right, so there we go. So the, um, the, the white screen is up. So as far as Ohio Link is finished, the data has been uploaded. Um, they verified it, and now it's gone into the actual process. So we can go to our upload history, and we will see that this right here is the process they're working on. You can see the batch type is upload, so you can see they tell us what they're doing. So this time they're uploading the data. Uh, the two files that we've uploaded show up here. Mm -hmm. They haven't given us this information yet because they're still working on the process. Mm -hmm. And again, the data will show up in an email. Mm -hmm. So you may get the email before I see you. You yeah, can either get see. the email yeah. or, um, Which one, whatever. or see it through the refresh. So I'm just going to refresh the page periodically. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to wait for it to finish. It shouldn't take that long for Ohio Link to finish the last step we found. Oh, we just seen an email, so I think, there we go. So you can see here that it says that it's successful. We now see that there are 50 rows and 50 files. That is exactly what we want to see. If those numbers are wrong, then we um, uh, would probably want to figure out which records didn't get loaded. But so far, so good. That hasn't happened. <laughs> Um, and and just as a, a note, um, I don't recommend doing this often, um, but we have um, we have worked uh, and have been very fortunate that the good folks at Ohio Link have uh, have been um, generous with their time as we've been working through this process. We've had a couple of starts and stops. Um, it, when you're going through this process, if you make a mistake they can back it out for you um, thankfully um, the process that we the process that we go through next is we need um, to download data back so that we can get the um, the URLs so the information that we need is is right here so in this batch ID 
the ID for the record that was just, just uploaded. Um, we click on that and we see all of the data that we just uploaded. Um, if you make a mistake, this is the information that OhioLink needs in order to back your mistake out. Um, they, have, they, uh, they do have information about everything that's uploaded by batch. Um, we've also been sending them our session numbers the occasionally when we have um, when we have times that we need them to delete something that we've uploaded the system incorrectly. Um, so we have our records. So these are our records. So now we have um, uh, two steps that we need to go through in order to generate the file that we're going to need in order to merge um, data back into our MARC records. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need an identifier. So you'll look at these records that we sent. Um, we have a, an accession number, but this is an accession number that was provided by OhioLink. So that's obviously not going to be in our records. We don't want to match by titles or anything like that. So what we really need is we need an, an identifier. Well, we provided one. In the um, CS file, CSV file that we sent, we use um, ProQuest identifier um, for these records as our match point. So it's the data that's in the 001. When we do our master's thesis, and we are uploading um, from data that's already in our catalog, we'll use the existing 001 in those records mm -hmm. um, as our control number. And, o and OhioLink has given us the ability to keep that information. So they've provided a general, um, right here, they've provided a general report, but we can select columns for output. So if we go down here, we can find the column that we've given them as our unique identifier. And so that's this one, uploader unique ID. So we select it, push it into our, uh, our display and apply. And now it's added to our list. So here's our identifier. So now we have all of the information we need in order to generate um, our records, our, to, to fix our mark records. So what we need to do now is we need to download the data. So we go back to Actions and select Download. And we're going to take the data in CSV format. So we go ahead and click CSV. Now, depending on which browser you're using, your experience for how the data gets downloaded is going to be different. I'm using Chrome. And you'll see that Chrome popped up a little button down here that shows me that this file has been downloaded. And if it's me, I'm going to click on this button. And I'm going to tell it to show in folder so that I can go get that file and move it into a place that I need to, so I can copy it into the location I need it. If you're using Firefox, there's gonna be a little arrow up here in the upper right-hand corner that when you're finished, will show up there that you would click on to get to your file. And if you're using Internet Explorer, you're gonna get um, a bar down here that's gonna tell you that the file's been downloaded and then you'll have the option to open the file or go to the folder or save it into another location. Right. Um, there are obviously other browsers. I don't use them all. So again, I'm going to assume that whatever browser you're using and that you're comfortable with, you're going to know how to get to the data. Generally, any data that gets downloaded by a browser is going to end up in your downloads folder. So if for some reason you can't figure out what your browser's done to tell you that, that the downloads happened, go to your downloads folder and you'll probably find it there. Uh, the file is always named etds 2 reviewedcsv and the operating system or the browser will add numbers to the end of that if you have copies of that file already in that folder. So we're going to go to that folder. You'll see that it's selected for me already. Mm -hmm. I am going to cut this file okay. and move it into the location where we have mm -hmm. our files here. Right. So I'm going to paste that into here. So this is our CSV file. So this one, let me just go ahead and open it so that you can see what's there. This file has the data that we just got from OhioLink. And you'll see that it shows our accession number, author name, submission, title, status. We don't care really about any of the information, but this one here, the permalink and the unique identifier. All right, so we need to get this data into this record. And so this is where we're going to use MarkEdit. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open MarkEdit. Now, um, for most people, the, the piece of uh, application that we're going to run would show up right here. Um, MarkEdit has the ability to change the screen. I can customize my screen based on um, what uh, programs I run most often. So I don't have it on the screen. Um, let me actually put it there so you can see what most people will see. 
Uh, let me uncheck one of these. Because the program we're going to run is the delimited text translator. So this is what most people will see when they load in, when they open Mark Edit, unless they've changed their screen. The file, the, the program we're using is the delimited text translator, and this program takes data that's in either comma delimited or text delimited or tab delimited or pipe delimited files and turns them into MARC records based on a set of criteria that you've provided. So we're going to go ahead and open this file, and we're going to go ahead and select the file that we just created. So I'm going to take a shortcut here, and I'm going to copy that location and put that right here so I don't have to navigate to a bunch of places. Um, and so I need to go to all files and pick my ETDS CSV file. And then my output file is going to be brief records. And a number is three, so this means three. It's up in the folder three? Yeah, so. I just gave us three. Oh, you're gonna, yeah. okay, yeah. So so our workflow yeah. is we've been adding the, the um, so number I, to the, this, the folder that we're working with, we add the number to it. Uh, so there we go. Uh, we need to set the delimiter value. So by default, it's tab because that tends to be what I work with most often. Um, but in this case, it's comma. And the way that the files come back from Ohio Link, they put quotation marks around each um, field. So we need to put a quotation mark um, there to tell MarkEdit that the data that we're working with, quotation marks represent field boundaries. And that's all we need to do. Um, then we click Next. And what you're going to see is Mark Edit then will generate for you um, uh, some information. So we can see um, uh, the header, if there's a header, and there is a header in these files. And then it gives us the uh, first field from um, those records. So we can see the data that's there. All right. Now, if you've used the delimited text translator before, you know that what you need to do is you select the field from these boxes and you define what Mark record it maps to. Now, in order to make this process easier here at Ohio State, and actually for anybody who wants to use this particular process, we've created a template. And that template then will create um, the mappings for you. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to load our template, and this way you can see what the, the mappings are when we're, when we're finished. Um, we keep the templates in um, this uh, project folder. Um, this is our template file. And when we load the templates, you'll see that the, 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 the arguments that are created, we map field 8, so here's field 8, to the 001. That's our identifier that we've told Ohio Link is our primary key, the one that we asked Ohio Link to add to the download report. And then we're going to take field 6, which happens to be the URL, and we're going to create an 856 subfield U with the data in this field. And then we create constant data, connect to this resource, ETD OSU. And so that's going to add that to the 856 so that when we're finished, we have one 856 that has all of the information that we need in that line. And the last thing we do is we make sure that this checkbox, ignore header row, is checked. Because we have a header in these records, we don't want to actually create um, that as a mark record. Um, so we're going to ignore the first line. And we're done. So that's all we needed to do. We click Finish. And Mark Edit tells us that records have been created. We go ahead and close it. And if we go up here, we'll see that these are our brief records. Let's go ahead and just open them so you can see what uh, gets generated. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that what gets generated is an 001 and the 856. That's it. There's an 008 and LDR that gets created, but that's just because they have to, and they're generic. But we don't care about those. We're going to ignore those pieces of information. The pieces we really are interested in are the 001, because that's going to be our merge point, and the 856, because that's the data we're going to bring into our records. And so let's go ahead and do that now. So the next step in our process is we merge data. We need to merge the information in the brief records into the rex.mrk. And that happens using a tool in MarkEdit called Merge Records. Um, you'll find it here in Tools and Merge Records. The process is pretty straightforward. The source file is the file, uh, the main records. So in our case, the source file happens to be, I'm just going to drag and drop here because I like to do that. So in our case, the source records are going to be the rex.mrk file. That's the one that we want to merge our data into. The data that's the merge file, the file with the data we're merging from, 
is the brief records. So that's the one we want to include in the merge file. And you could use the opening buttons here and select them from files. I just like to drag and drop things. The save file is going to be where we're actually going to save our merge data. So MarkEdit likes to create um, copies of things rather than overwriting a lot of your data files. That way, if there's any problems, you don't have to start from scratch. So we're going to create a merged record file. So this is going to be our final merged three. So this is going to be the file that when we're finished, now we'll have the mark records that we need to load to OCLC. So we go ahead and tell that to save. Um, and now it's just telling the merge record tool how we're going to merge data. So the record identifier, this is our merge criteria. So we're going to merge on the 001. So that's fine. We don't need to make any changes here because we're going to use the 001 in the source file and the 001 in the merge file to determine where um, the 856 goes. So we're going to leave this as 001. We click next. This is where we decide which field we're going to take from our merge file. We want an 856. So we say 856, push that over to the merge fields, and that's it. Um, all of this other information you can ignore. Then we click Next, and the records have been merged. And if we go back to our folder, we will see final records merged. And if we open it up, we will see um, in the 856, and again, you'll this will all run yeah. faster. It's the this right. is actually the the screen recording that's causing that. I have one question here. Yeah. Okay. So um, we definitely need to do some cleaning based on this one, right? And yeah. this is dot mrk file. Um, I know when we load to OCRC uh, OCRC WordCamp, we need to make a mrk mrc file. Yes. Can I just, just directly save this mrk after cleaning to an mrc file? No. So once you you're so once you're done mm -hmm. changing these files, you do have to compile them okay. into the .mrc file. Oh, okay. So Indeed. the workflow I like to use because I never mm -hmm. know if I'm going to come back and work with these again mm -hmm. is after I make whatever changes I make, I like to save and then compile. Oh, so these okay. this is so the save the button. Step. Yeah. So this will save the data back sure. to mark to back to this mnemonic format. So yep. if I ever have to open it again, I can. Mm -hmm. And then this is the compile button, which will change the records into the binary mark. Okay. All right, so if we look at these, we'll see um, here is our 856 that we merged in. We also had another 856, which is our ProQuest data. Mm -hmm. We decided not to delete those, those um, links because those are actually links to our records, mm -hmm. um, but we do have the link to um, Ohio Link. So we have some things we need to clean up now. Um, from from these records. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is for whatever reason, our data, that should be a subfield B, not an A. Um, you'll also notice that we have um, 9xx fields uh, when loading into OCLC, that data needs to go away. Um, so we have a task that will do that for us. So let's go ahead and go and do that. So for um, most people, um, you won't have to go through this process, but I'm going to import the task. So we're going to do the whole shebang here. Um, if this is the first time you've run the program, um, there's a task that we've created that does the cleanup that we need um, for our process. And so to get to that task, we've created a template. Um, and in order to get to that template um, and bring it into MarkEdit, you go to Tools, uh, Manage Tasks, Import Task, and then we go back to Schraub's folder, templates, and here is our task. And we import that task, and here it is right here. That's the task that we're going to use now to clean the records. And if you want to look at it, um, you click Edit Seleska Task, and you can see the kind of the, the work we're doing. Mm. We're going to delete the 001 from these records because the 001 in the records currently represents the ProQuest ID number, yep. which we don't want to keep. Yep. It's actually already stored in the 035. Mm. Um, we don't want to keep the 9xx fields because OCLC is going to ignore them anyway, mm -hmm. and we regenerate them when we upload the data to our catalog. And then this right here is going to change the um, subfield A to a subfield B in the 502s when the 502 has a subfield A um, rather than the correct subfield B. So that's, that's all that we're doing um, with our task. We're going to do quick cleanup. All right, so once that task is there, the way that we run our task is we go to Tools, Assigned Tasks, 
and current available tasks. Now for most of you, if you haven't used tasks before, you will only have one, and it will be this one, the OSU ETD task, or if this is being used at an institution outside of Ohio State, whatever you've called your task name. Um, and to run it, you just select it. And Mark Edit now goes about doing its business. And at the end, you get a report telling you what's been done. So we had we deleted 50 001s. Um, there were 159 XX fields deleted, which makes sense because there are three in every field, and there were 50 modifications. So every one of our records had a 502 subfield A. So we had to correct those in order for OCLC to accept them. We're done. So now you can see our records. They've been cleaned. Um, and so from this point, uh, the process then would be if Sharab mm -hmm. or if your institution has any additional edits they want to make, they can make them now. Mm -hmm. um, or uh, what I end up doing is I save my records and then I compile them yep. to Mark. And so I have my data now. We'll make sure it goes into the correct folder. And this will be final mark to load three. Okay. And now we're done. So there are now 50 records sitting right here that are ready to be sent to OCLC and then loaded into our IIII catalog, our, our, our interlibrary loan system. And that's the process. Uh, Sharab has made a very nice step-by-step -step guide that goes through every one of the steps that we've talked about today, includes a number of screenshots, and actually goes into a little more detail than we've talked about here. So um, it can be a, it's actually a great companion to um, this particular screenshot video. Um, but we hope that this is useful, and at least if you're planning on embarking on a batch uploading project to the Ohio Link ETD Center, that this helps you understand what's necessary and maybe helps give you some ideas on how to get um, uh, make your way through the process. If you, have any, if you have any questions, feel free to contact Sharab. Um, I'm yeah. sure everybody knows him. Um, <laughs> and uh, if you have questions specifically about Mark Edit, um, I am really easy to find. Otherwise, on the Ohio Link side, Emily Flynn is the one to talk to. Okay? Thank bye. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.